Welcome to the HyperWorks 2024.1 introduction videos. This video is about ribbons and tools. Most of the functionality in HyperMesh can be accessed through tools from the ribbons. Let us start with a simple example, the measure tool, which is available in the home ribbon, top left. Click on the icon to open the tool. Most tools show up with respective dialogues at the top of the graphics area. In this simple case, the so-called guide bar offers you the options menu and a selector for different modes. We stay in interactive and have a look at the workflow help below the guide bar. You can expand it to get details displayed about the current tool. Close the workflow help, then start measuring by clicking on selected locations. See that measures that have a common location automatically show the angle and radius provided by the assumed three measurement locations. You may click on a distance measure entity to display also the X, Y, and Z components. Click again to hide this information. Right-click to access the possibility to copy the measured values. Let us move on and leave this tool. To leave a tool you can either click the tool symbol again, right-click and click on the swipe sign left of the dialog, right-click and choose Exit Tool, or simply hit Escape. This is what we do here. See that Escape in this case is working in two stages. A first hit clears existing measures. Then a second hit exits the tool. Let us explore the ribbons a bit before entering a more complex tool. Staying on the measure icon, note that it consists of two parts. When you hover your mouse over the smaller icon showing a scale, it gets highlighted. Clicking now will open the Calculate tool. This is a tool offering calculation of area, mass and center of gravity, amongst others. You learned that some icons have more than one area that you can click to access different tools. Now let's look at the Move tool to the right of the Measure tool. Click on the small black triangle, bottom right of it. See that you can switch the tool here, for example to Mirror or Scale Action. Now click on the pull-downs right of HyperMesh and see that these are each individual ribbon menus. Open the Topology ribbon. Before accessing another tool, have a look at the category names below the icons. Like Setup, Create or Edit. Click on the black triangle right of Create and Edit. See that these are pull-down menus offering access to additional tools. Note also that additional icons may be available to the right of a ribbon, which you can access by the arrows on the right edge of that ribbon. Now click on the icon for the tool split slash stitch. See a guide bar opening, giving the choice of different ways to split. We stay in, interactive, and start with having another look at the workflow help. Here it does not only explain multiple options in this tool, like the effect of the control key and the shift key, but it offers additionally a video visualizing these options. Let us use the circle zoom with the alt key and drawing a diagonal with the middle mouse button to zoom further in and avoid the snaps being dominant in the following actions. Then we apply the tool's functionality by clicking on the surface to set a fixed point and drawing a line to cut an edge inside the surface. See that per default, the surface is remeshed directly to match the new topology of the geometry. You can change this behavior by the preference CAD Topology Revision. Now let's look at the options the Shift key provides. In many cases, the Shift key makes a tool do the opposite of its default function. Like you know already, for selection, with Shift you switch to deselection. 
Here, see that with the shift key pressed, you can remove the fixed point, as well as the edge, by clicking on them. Note that the mesh is not updated in this case, because it still represents the topology of the geometry. You can activate remeshing also in such cases, by unchecking the preference, keep mesh along match topology. Hit the B key to get back to the view before applying the circle zoom. Then access the tool split. Here you see a guide bar which expects multiple inputs. A target, that will be split. And a tool, that will define the splitting method. For most selectors, you may apply any selection method to feed it. Like window or right-click selection. Here, we simply click on a surface to select it to be cut. Then click on the selector for method to activate it. Hover over an edge to see the suggested tool orientation displayed. Click on an edge to select that location. This will bring you to the edit mode of the tool, in which you can still adjust position and orientation in detail. Leave it as it is and click Apply in the Micro dialog. You will see details about definition of directions, vectors, and planes in the following video. Finalize your tool action by clicking OK in the guide bar. Alternatively, you could have confirmed split by clicking the middle mouse button. So much for the application of tools. To close this video, let us have a look at two related options. The first one is an alternate way to find and access tools, and also solver keywords of interest. Top right, click on the magnifier icon to activate the search field. Now enter a term to identify the tool you are searching for. Like for example, you are searching for the tool to check and adjust element normals. See a list of suggested tools appear once you start typing. Select from the list to open the respective tool. Another interesting option of the search field is to directly be able to search for tools creating a certain solver keyword. Like typing RB2 will show you the tool that lets you create RB2s. Now the second and last option to mention here is the tool belt. Hold the Alt key pressed, then right click to make the tool belt appear. See that it offers a choice of tools to be accessed in close proximity to your mouse pointer. Note that right clicking in the tool belt offers to customize and export or import its tool selection. The next video in the series will show you how to define directions and planes. Thanks for watching.